Welcome to A Well Cared For Human, the podcast that tries to convince you that you are 100% normal and an even better than okay example of the human species, despite the fact that sometimes we feel like the craziest, most incapable, or worthless creatures on the face of this planet. I'm Corey, an author, a creative, and the host of the show. Whatever you're bringing to the table today, I hope this episode proves to be a dose of inspiration for you on your quest to become a well-cared-for human. You can find the episode show notes, your free wellness blueprint, and more at awellcaredforhuman.com. And as always, thank you for listening. Hello humans, it's me, Corey, and today I want to talk to you about your second essential tool, journaling. And yet again, I have three strategies to share with you. The whole three meditation strategies followed by three journaling strategies was entirely coincidental, by the way. I'm telling you that now because the next episode is affirmations and I do not have three affirmation strategies. So I am just managing your expectations in advance. What a control freak thing to do. Seeking control is a common trauma response, by the way, for people who had unpredictable and erratic caregivers, aka people like me, but I digress. Journaling. I first dabbled in journaling the way most of us do in my teenage years. I still have a lot of my early journals from Corey aged 16 or 17. I would rather be run through by a sword than let anyone see them, but I'm sure you can guess that they were full of girl problems and lots of angsty emotional poetry about how my pain is like rain falling. Fortunately for everyone, my metaphors have improved with time, though I cannot say that I am any less dramatic, unfortunately. When it comes to formal journaling, as in journaling that isn't just an emotional outpouring, I would have to say that one of my biggest influences has been Julia Cameron, Julia Cameron is an author and artist, and I believe that she's directed movies too, but what I know her from, and what a lot of creatives know her from, is her super popular book, The Artist's Way. In The Artist's Way, Cameron recommends that everyone have a practice known as morning pages. Morning pages are written longhand, meaning that you can't type them, you have to use the good old-fashioned analog pen and paper, and you do it for three full pages. Not front and back pages, but just like front, back, and then front again. So a total of three sides of a page, written by your hand. And as you can guess, she recommends that this be done in the morning, hence the morning part of the morning pages, and that you don't really have to have an objective or theme to the pages, just that your goal is to keep your hand moving until you complete your pages. From experience, I can agree with her that this is an excellent way of stimulating creativity, as she calls it, scrubbing the mind clean, as in like scrubbing pots, I believe was her metaphor. So if you're into anything creative, or even if just you want to be more creative, I highly recommend the book. It's set up like a 12-week program, so you do like a set of exercises each week. And I've run through the program probably three or four times at this point in my life for different creative blockages that I had at different moments in my life, and I just love it. This is not sponsored, by the way. All of this is just my opinion. So I've done morning pages on and off for many years, but another technique I picked up along the way was described by Sean Aker. Sean Aker is a positivity psychologist at Harvard, best known for his super popular TED Talk, which I'll link to in the show notes for you, but he mentions toward the end of his talk that journaling about a positive experience that you've had in the last 24 hours allows you to relive that experience. So you should definitely watch the TED Talk if you have time. I think it's 10 or 12 minutes in total. And he makes a great argument for how happiness leads to success rather than success to happiness. But the part that really struck me is when he talks about retraining the brain to look for positive features in an environment rather than the negative ones. And I certainly had a brain that was wired to find the negative in the world because of my upbringing. Because, you know, when terrible things just keep happening back to back, I came to believe that I could always expect the worst, if you know what I mean. So the idea that this was a learned habit, this tendency to expect the worst, was something that I could break, was absolutely revolutionary for me. Anyway, Aker recommends reliving positive experiences through journaling for a happiness boost. And so I've done this and it did work for me, though I would expand upon his, quote, last 24 hours clause. If you've had a positive experience in the last 24 hours, no matter how small it was, awesome. Yes, journal about that. But if you have not had a positive experience, if you are, in fact, as many of us are from time to time, in a famine of positive experiences, don't be afraid to go back further or even into the future of a positive experience you would like to have. 
So all I'm saying is don't let the 24-hour requirement hold you up. Another technique that really helps me when my anxiety is high is journaling right before bed. If my thoughts are really racing and I'm feeling somewhat or really out of control, I will take my journal to bed with me and I'll write down everything that I'm worrying about or obsessing over before I try to sleep. There's something about this that soothes my mind so that I can kind of wind down and go to sleep. Getting everything out of my head and onto the page seems to work better than just letting all my thoughts bounce around unchecked in there. So if you're someone who struggles to fall asleep because you're thinking too much, you might find this technique helpful. You can do it in the same fashion as the morning pages, just letting whatever comes out of you without censoring it, if that helps. Kind of like letting the brain wear itself down so that it gets tired too and you can sleep. And I would like to recommend in general not to censor yourself when you're journaling. Don't interrupt the momentum if you can help it. Just let whatever come, come. You don't ever have to go back and read this and no one else should be reading it. So it's just a tool to help your mind relax. There's no need to bring judgment or self-criticism to the process. This is just one of the few moments in our lives where we can just totally let it all out. Just free flow, unhindered. So what does this look like for me? Well, I get up in the morning, I make a cup of tea, I put together my breakfast, and I sit down at the dining room table, I eat said breakfast, and then I open up my journal and write the date at the top, and boom, I'm off. I keep my hand moving until I almost fill up my three pages. I leave about four lines at the end of my third page to list my gratitudes, in which I jot down a few things that I'm feeling grateful for. Maybe a great breakfast, my comfy sweater, Charlie's health, you know, whatever comes to me in the moment. I'm also a thinker, though, so sometimes I want to explore ideas or contemplate something. So there have been a few times when I'd write a note on the top of the next page, the next blank page, something that I want to think about or write about the next day. But mostly, I just let whatever comes up out onto the page. And for me, that means sometimes it's super boring. And I usually write down everything I want to do that day. Or maybe I'll write down an interesting dream I had or a story idea. Whatever it is, I just get it out and then wrap up with my gratitudes. My journal is nothing fancy. It's definitely true that I am often gifted beautiful journals by my friends and family because they know I like to write. But I'm often just writing in a composition notebook. I got one from the dollar store for a buck. And I've gotten a couple from my grocery store that I think were maybe two or three bucks when I pop in to buy eggs or dog food or whatever. It really doesn't matter. Just whatever you can afford and whatever you'll actually use, just get that. And a pen that works. In fact, I keep two pens with my journal because, my God, nothing is more annoying than being a page into your journal entry for the day, speeding along, and then the ink just dries up on you. It is the worst. As for how long it takes me to write the three pages, it depends on how fast my hand is moving and how well I manage my tendency to daydream. So usually 10 to 15 minutes for three pages. As for how you should begin with this essential tool, honestly, only you can decide that. But I recommend getting a notebook first and a pen or two. Decide when you're going to do it, if it's best in the morning or night for you, or maybe sometime in the day when you have a break, like lunch. But just make sure that it's a daily habit if you can manage it. And maybe decide ahead of time what your priorities are. So for example, if you want to be calmer, then the artist's way free write be the way to go. Or if you're dealing with a lot of negativity, you could try Acre's method of reliving positive experiences in order to do some brain training. Or if you're dealing with anxiety, you might want to consider the night journaling. Or if you're really going through it and the anxiety is still present in the morning, then you can morning journal too. I'm not going to stop you. Heck, there is no rule to how many times a day you can journal. And in truth, there are plenty of days when I'm doing a little bit of everything. So I start in a free write, then halfway through I remember something awesome that happened and I relive that. Or now, because I've had a taste of happiness, my anxiety bursts through to reassert its dominance, and then I'm back to free writing. I've written pages in the morning, at night, halfway through the day because I realized I'd forgotten the morning. So truly, there's no wrong way to do this. Just play around with it until you find what works for you. So that's it for this episode. Up next, affirmations. This episode of A Well-Cared-For Human was written and produced by me, Corey Marie. The music was by Late Night Feeler and Esther Abrami. 
If you like what I'm doing here, please consider visiting my Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you get early ad-free access to the episodes, as well as a monthly patrons-only Q&A, bonus videos, and more. Not to mention that your Patreon support lets me know that you find value in the show and want it to continue. You can find me on Patreon by visiting www.patreon.com forward slash Corey Marie. If you can't support the show financially, that is okay. You can still subscribe to the show, leave a review of the show, and recommend the show to your friends, not just the neurotic ones. All of this helps so much. And as always, thank you for listening.